Want me to edit my review? Okay bet. I was going to buy a car from a small used car dealership. We agreed on a price and a day to meet. The morning of he sold it out from under me right before I was there with no courtesy call or text or anything. I wrote an accurate review reflecting my experiences with the dealership online. A couple days later he calls and threatens me with a lawsuit claiming my review is slander. He warned me everyone else that gave a one-star review was sued for slander and had to pay court fees and remove their review. He said if I edited the review everything would be fine and he wouldn't take me to court. Well, I obliged and edited my review stating he threatened me over the phone with a lawsuit since I gave a negative review and that my review was in fact 100% accurate of my experiences. The icing on the cake. I text him right after I edited the review and said, Hey man edited the review as requested hope there are no hard feelings. I guess he didn't read my edit before replying with, Thanks man I appreciate it. No hard feelings. I'll update if he reads the review and contacts me again. Update, well sorry to disappoint but his reply was not wildly entertaining as anticipated. He opted to not call me again or text me but to reply to my review on Google. He absolutely went into damage control mode after my edit stated he threatened a lawsuit over my review. He did what anyone would do and skewed the story to make him look less like the bad guy and more like the poor business owner who has an unwarranted negative review. I once again edited my review to combat some things he said. I bought a different car the next day that was a lot nicer and I am going to be happier with it. I just had my first daughter on July 5th and was just trying to find a car safer for her to be in. I wasn't out to ruin this guy's business or anything but after he threatened me the gloves were off. I am glad you guys enjoyed my post and I'll update again if anything worth posting happens. Now to the comments. I had a somewhat similar experience, except I bought the car and 12 days later the transmission went out. Steelership tried to dodge responsibility, upon further inspection, the transmission had been bad for a while, it had been overfilled with fluid to hide the problem, the AC system had been overcharged and caused the system to fail, and much more. I lambasted them on the review, then three hours later he was calling me trying to lay everything off on me. Long story short they offered to pay 75% of the rebuild cost of the transmission. When the work was complete, they refused to pay until I increased the star rating of the review and edited it. Went in to make my next payment, it had increased by $100. They financed the cost of the repair without telling me. Long story short, review went back to one star and I'm trying to find a lawyer to take my case. All calls were recorded, one party consent state, and all issues are documented as prior damage that was attempted to be hidden. If you are in the US, most states have lemon laws. Lemon law wouldn't apply here. The dealership would need to attempt repairs and be unsuccessful in their attempts. And since this sounds like a used car, it definitely wouldn't apply. Lemon laws only cover new cars. At least in my state, CA. This is most likely just a case of good old fraud. I once left a negative but honest review of a driving school over two years after I'd got my license, since I was afraid of retaliation. Two years after that, the instructor mailed a letter to my parents about how I was a horrible person and they should raise me better, and threatening to sue for defamation. I edited my review to include the entire content of the letter, complete with spelling and grammar errors. The spelling and grammatical errors are the icing on the shit cake. Not slander. Slander is spoken. Libel is the word he's looking for. And since he doesn't know it, then I doubt he's successfully sued. Edit, not technically libel either it turns out. Defamation seems to be the hot term for bad reviews. Edit 2, yes, J. Jonah Jameson taught us all well. I had the quote in my head as I typed it. Also, yes, it's only defamation slash libel slash slander if you're being deliberately false. Only if what they say is false. The truth shall set you free. Not just that. In the US at least, plaintiff has to prove the defense knew it was false. For instance, 
if I just thought someone was a lying, cheating dick, even if they prove themselves not to be. They also have to find evidence that I knew such, yet wanted to publicly claim otherwise with the intention to reach a large audience. Turns out this is a pretty tough standard to meet. Man, I would love to see his face after he reads your edit. Ducking priceless. Here's video from inside the office, right after he reread the review. I'll be honest, I half expected to be rickrolled when I clicked on that. That's ducking. Hilarious. If someone sues you and tries to quench speech via litigation, there is a countersuit called a SLAPP, suit which awards treble, triple, damages. He would get in serious trouble trying to do what he threatened to do. In the US. We do not like people using the law as a weapon in this manner that is why we have SLAPP. Suits. So, it's like a legal witch slap. Yup, it's a great law. Once upon a time there was a sewing machine store that I gave an honest but negative review. I posted this review on my personal web pages. They wrote me an angry email threatening a lawsuit and claiming that they'd already talked to my webmaster and he agreed it was slanderous and would take down my entire website if I didn't remove the review and post something nice about them. So, I looked over my shoulder and said Bob, do you know anything about this? I was sitting in the room with my webmaster. And the server, as it happened. He didn't, so I posted their email and my reply in which I pointed out that they were lying and that if they took me to court, I'd point out that they're violating my First Amendment rights, my webmaster would testify that they lied, and by the time I was done with them I'd own their store. I got a much meeker reply back from them a couple years later, politely asking if I would consider taking down the review. The store isn't there anymore. Maybe they were like, OP can't own us if we don't exist. It took them about 10 years to go out of business, so while my review no doubt hurt their business, I used to be both locally famous in sewing circles and internationally known for my website, it didn't by any means kill them. The morning of he sold it out from under me right before I was there, he never had the car, or if he did, he sold it months ago. This is the classic bait and switch that a lot of shady dealers do. They'll post an ad with a great car at an incredible price and then when people show up to buy it, they say ah, shucks, just sold it, why not take a look at all these other shittier cars at worse prices. Yeah, I've seen it done. Ex-dealer mechanic and salesman. Shitty business tbh. Steelerships. I had a car dealership do the exact same thing to me after I put an honest review of my experience. I went back and edited it to include that they had called me and threatened to sue me. I can't wait for him to read it. Ha! Huh? I had a milder version of this experience recently. I gave a bar a 4 stars review, said it was a nice place, and that the beers were a little pricey, but that I have certainly paid more. They responded that they have many beers on tap, and while some are pricier, they also have less expensive ones. So, I went back. I took a closer look at the menu and realized it was actually very expensive overall. Only three decently priced beers, and those were from the local brewery, so everyone here sells at that price. But this time it took 25 minutes to order even though they were dead, and I tried some food which was so disappointing. So, I edited my review to reflect that the prices were worse than I thought, the service was bad, and the food wasn't good. Enjoy the two-star review, guys.